Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Introduction to Quantitative Chemistry module. This is video number 16 and we're going to extend our study of concentrations to start looking at dilutions. So perhaps, so perhaps the first thing we need to do is to just have a little bit of a look at the difference in different types of solutions. And we know that a solution consists of a solute and a solvent and often that solvent is water. And we can describe the solution in terms of the ratio of solute to solvent. So if the solute is very high in its quantity in uh, comparison to a small amount of solvent, then we have what's called a concentrated solution. This is to be um, not confused with the terms weak and strong. They refer to other things that we'll look at um, later on in the course. For now, all we're doing is looking at the ratio of solute to solvent. If that ratio is very high, high solute, we have a concentrated solution. If the solvent is very high and we only have a small amount of the solute, then it's a dilute solution. Concentrated solutions can be diluted by adding more solvent. You can see in the little diagram that we've included, we have a solution. We transfer one mil of each solution into uh, a test tube and then we add uh, water to bring that up to the original volume. Then we add another um, mil from that to the next test tube and so on and so on. So these are uh, being diluted uh, tenfold each time. So if we originally start with a um, one in 10 solution, so a 0 0.1 moles per litre solution, then when we dilute that by 10, obviously the molarity is going to start dropping successively and so on. Now, if we do it in an ordered way like this, we can have a good idea of exactly what the concentration of each new solution is. But what if we don't do it like this? Is there another way? Of course there is, we don't have to do one in 10 fold dilutions each time, but when we change the concentration through dilution, one of the important things we need to be aware of is that if we keep the same solution and just add water to it, we're not changing the amount of solute. So effectively in our formula where concentration is equal to number of moles over volume, Adding water to a solution does not change N. What that means is if initially the concentration is equal to the initial mass, uh, uh, initial number of moles divided by the initial volume, and then after some dilution, we have uh, a second concentration, which is a number of moles divided by the new volume, then the important thing to remember is that these two values are equal to each other. And if these two things are equal to each other, we said before, you put your name on your CV. So if we rearrange these equations, then if these two things are equal, then it stands to reason that these two things must also be equal. And in fact, that's how we get this little equation over here. C1V1 equals C2V2. Now this works if we're not transferring out of the solution. It's obviously if we have a certain concentration and we transfer a small quantity out of that solution, we're not uh, maintaining the number of moles that are present. But if you have a solution that you dilute by adding water, this works quite well. Here's an example. Can we calculate the final concentration of a solution formed when 95 mils of water is added to 5 mils of a 0.5 moles per litre sulfuric acid solution? So if we use our formula C1V1 equals C2V2, assuming that the sulfuric acid is going to be, the amount of sulfuric acid is not going to change before and after, the initial concentration is 0.5. The initial volume is 5 mils, so 0 0.005. That's going to be equal to the final concentration, or C2. And V2 is equal to the sum of this and this. Because we're adding water, 
we're going to um, increase the volume to a final volume of 100 mils. 95 plus 5 is 100. And because this is 100 mils, this is 0 0.1 litres. So it's 0 .0, uh, 0 0.1. So I want to isolate C2 on its own. So therefore, uh, when I look at this, my final concentration um, is going to be um, 525, uh, 0.025 moles per litre. Okay, so in this case, we have um, been able to dilute our original solution down through the addition of water. Now this formula should work consistently for you for each of these examples, but you will need to practice. So good luck and thanks for watching.